Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV and I don't know if you're like me, but growing up I had this uncanny ability to tell my parents, no, I don't need to use the bathroom when we just passed the last rest stop for about 4,000 miles. And as soon as we do, I go, mom, dad, I got a potty. Um, if you've ever had that experience, you know how handy it can be to have good road mode travel access uh, through a family camper. And that's what I want to do today. Um, uh, I'm kind of continuing this little series at your request. Thank you for keeping the, uh, the ideas coming in. Uh, basically, we're going to be doing some fast flyby looks at a handful of bunkhouse models that I've had a chance to review in the 2023 season, all of which you can access and use uh, the, the bed, and the bunk, so your bed and the kids' bed, the bathroom and the refrigerator, without ever touching the slide out. And if you like this little quick fast flyby look at things, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you see a model that you want to learn a little bit more about, because these are not going to be super in-depth, they're, uh, they're going to be just quick flybys, check the links in the description where I've got uh, links to the full videos for every single one of these things. And let's get started. What if somebody actually made a Murphy bed that didn't block a front windshield? Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV taking a look at like a cult following kind of floor plan. This is the 208 BHS Apex. And this thing manages in a narrow body to accomplish things a lot of eight foot wide standard body campers just don't do. It gives us a 60 by 80 true queen bed, and you can choose either Murphy or non-Murphy version, but the way that they do it by like half folding up into something of like um, a day bed behind a potential jackknife sofa doesn't block the windshield. Have you ever seen, how many RVs have these Murphy beds that block the windshield? So it, it basically, it's eye candy from the outside, but it's a nearly completely non-functional item. You don't run into that here. Now this is an all aluminum skeleton. You have laminated roof, floors, walls. Uh, it's also a double Asdell product where they're using the Asdell on the inside and outside layers of the walls. But you might have noticed there's like a giant hole in the roof, and by that I mean the big stargazer skylight that you can option into these. You're not forced into that. You can option uh, into that. By default, it actually doesn't have that, in case you're a little spooked by it or just don't like it. I don't know. Maybe you don't want the squirrels peeking at you at night if you're hugging. I'm not sure. Uh, this has a little miniature camp kitchen, a full-up cargo bunk. It doesn't have an, a rear outside access door. I wish it did. But information like that, telling you here's what it does have, here's what it doesn't have, that's the kind of stuff we're going to be doing for you in this video to help you make the best and most educated decision possible. For the 23 season, they have significantly improved their solar package. That is one major thing I'm really happy to see. They now have a 30 amp charge controller instead of a 10 that was basically maxed out. And instead of a 100 watt panel, they have 200. And with that 30 amp controller, they could add some more if you were so inclined. So they've done some good bulking up there. And for a trailer this size, it's narrow, it's light, it's tandem axle. And we're looking at it in the, uh, the like off-road version, as, as they call it. I call it off-pavement. But we're, we're getting to see almost like every option possible on one of these today. Let me know what you think of this one as we go. Where do they nail it and where do they fail it? Everybody. Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, actually out in Idaho today, getting a look at uh, updates here on the 184 BS. Now, uh, we're looking at a uh, Western Edition, uh, like fully loaded, basically every option that's available from the Idaho production facility, that's what we're looking at today. And you can basically almost exactly replicate this with the STX edition of the SLX J Flight uh, from the Indiana production. So you can get this pretty much the same either way. Now, never mind all that. What is this one? This is a, uh, this this is a great little uh, family, maybe starter camper, maybe you're upgrading from something like a pop-up or a hybrid, but it doesn't have to just be a family camper. The bunks can actually function in some really good storage space, or this could work really well for like buddy hunting, camping, or sisters on the fly or something like that. Now this one, what it does is it takes the 174, very popular no slide model, and just gives it a dinette in a slide. And what that does is it creates the extra space to move up from like a two person dinette to a four person dinette. In case you really wanna wrap the whole family around it, 
Or if you're looking at this, you're like, man, I love this, but I'm afraid of slides. I call that being a slide skeptic. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. That sounds negative. That's not what I mean. Uh, look at the 174 instead of the 184, and you're going to like what you see, I think. Uh, now, Jayco always comes in with like the best-in-class bunk ratings. They have the best-in-class warranty. They've got Goodyear tires. Uh, we're looking at one again today with the optional factory solar package and about every other option applied to it, including the fiberglass skin option, where if you live in hail country, that is an amazing way to keep your RV from looking like Woody Woodpecker, just ba -ba -ba -ba, like all over the place on that thing. Um, it is also, and this is I think one of the biggest qualities on this RV, a 60 by 80 true queen. Now to get to this size and this weight, it does have to be an east-west bed, so you're climbing over one another. Um, it's got some other really good qualities like that. It's also got a couple things that I don't personally love. I'm going to try to share a little bit of both as we go. Let me know what you think, good, bad, ugly, and in between, and I'll try to do the same. Why does it look better than me? Hello and welcome everybody. Josh here from Bish's RV. And I think it was almost at the exact same event uh, previously that I recorded the 2022 version of this, the North Trail 24 BHS. This is a very conventional, straightforward bunkhouse, but Kind of like a crocodile or an alligator. Some things don't need to change to stay deadly. So if you've got like a half-ton vehicle or a bigger tow package SUV, which would be great for moving your family around, you may not have to like, you know, give up your daily driver necessarily just to go camping. And with the wide stance, stability axles, the weight rating on this, and the generally shorter length, it should tow pretty darn nicely. Now, um, North Trail listened to a lot of the feedback that you gave last year. They were able to adopt some of it. They weren't able to adopt all of it. We're going to take a look together to see what they were able to accomplish. So if you've never seen a North Trail, um, this is what, you don't judge this book by its cover. It's got some key details. It's got all the right junk in all the right places. Um, it, it's not the biggest, fanciest, flashiest RV, but we've got things like a true two-inch sidewall which very, very few brands offer, especially in travel trailers. That's incredibly uncommon. They have perhaps the biggest front storage compartment I think I've ever seen on a travel trailer as a, as a matter of happenstance, not some goofy one-off floor plan. Underbelly is heated. I mentioned the wide stance axles. They've um, done a little bit with solar. I would have kind of liked to see them go a little bit further, but I'll be interested on your feedback on that. Um, the camp kitchen is great. The RV does have a couple hiccups though, like it's awesome it has a plywood floor, it's awesome it has a big king bed in this thing, like a fifth wheel size king, but um, the king bed really eats up the space, like you crawl in bed and that's all you do, but I, I think a smaller RV like this you spend more time uh, outside anyway. The road mode, you know what, I can't remember, we're going to have to close the slide to check on the road mode, but doing things like that for you, that's what we will do for you in this video, and if you like those little extra steps and extra efforts, oh, which reminds me, I, I am really excited, I have some awesome footage of the dinette you have to see on this one. Hello and welcome back everybody. Welcome to Bish's RV. If it's your first time here, we're in Coldwater, Michigan at my hometown store today. You can see it over my left shoulder. And that right there over my right shoulder is the J Feather 27 BHB. And let's dive into this thing and take a look at it with our little Bish's RV floor plan in a flash, as I like to call it. Uh, this is a, uh, well, they're Asdell now, by the way. That's something that clicked over last year. Not a lot of people realize. J Feathers, all of them, not just the micros, are all now double Asdell walls. So is Big Brother Whitehawk, by the way. Um, the uh, model here is something that should generally be half-ton towable for a common tow package half-ton. There might be some lighter duty half-tons that may not quite be up to the task, so always double check your tow capacities on an individual vehicle basis. Um, it's a great extended season model with a heated enclosed belly, not fully all the way four seasons, and giving you that fair good and bad info, that's what we're going to do here for you today. Like we've got turn signal safety lighting, Goodyear endurance radials, factory TPMS on these that very few brands in this class are Offering. Although I'm going to give Rockwood credit, they were doing it first and longest. Uh, we're looking at one today up on that uh, plywood decked walkable roof uh, rated for snow loads. We've got a factory solar package. It is a carpetless uh, floor flush slide 
where that is really nice is in the dining area. God forbid the uh, kids spill something. It's a lot easier to clean up on that vinyl, that linoleum, whatever you want to call it. Uh, best in class bunk ratings, best in class warranty, best in class a lot of things going in on this one. That's one of the things. These are rarely the lightest weight um, or the, the least expensive in their class, but you could argue they're some of the most heavily equipped. There's a couple areas though that might be some instant deal breakers and points of concern for folks. I'm gonna share that as we go. And I would ask you, tell me what you like, tell me what you dislike, and what would you change given the opportunity? I guess that would be basically what you dislike, isn't it? I don't know. Hit subscribe if you appreciate that I'm trying to be fair. <laughs>
than some super slide travel trailers that I see nowadays. And I'm not saying 1,500 pounds is amazing, but it's better than most. And on a little camper like this, I do think it's pretty legitimate. Let me know what you like, let me know what you dislike, and hit that subscribe button if you appreciate the fair way that we uh, go about showing you these things. There's a word for something like this. It hasn't been invented yet, but there's a word for it. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Vicious RV, taking a look at the uh, new 235BH Transcend. I'm gonna tell you, bit of a guilty pleasure here. Transcend is kind of sort of becoming maybe one of my favorite stick and tin brands out there because they are so willing to do everything so weird and different and new and weird and different well that's really on brand for me so this thing if you just look at it it's just a great solo or couples model it's got just wide open living space all the space in the world you could ever want um and uh plenty of seating lots of room for lots of butts but that's the really weird thing about this one it's like it's a bunkhouse that's not a bunkhouse and i know that sounds really weird but when you see this i think you'll agree it makes a lot of sense but the funny thing is it doesn't follow all the rules of bunkhouses it's not like cramped it's not boring it doesn't have a crappy entertainment center the kitchen doesn't suck it breaks all those rules it writes its own playbook but that's really again the thing i like about transcend they're going about everything in just such a cool and fun and, and different way than what you normally find out there now um the size and the weight of this should generally uh work for a lot of uh say late model tow package half tons you always want to check towing capacities uh individually for safety's sake but these have a pretty decent weathering package on them it is a camp queen bendy bed that will be an instant deal breaker for some folks and i don't mind sharing that stuff before you spend 20 minutes of your life listening to me ramble on sometimes it's kind of no uh important to know how to spend your time effectively and giving you that kind of good fair information that's the stuff that we're going to do in this video today so if you're new with us make sure you hit that subscribe button returning members of the rv nerd herd let me know you're out there and let me know what you think about this crazy thing Hello and welcome everybody to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and behind us a nice update on the 267 BHS J Flight. Um, this is like a fantastic starter model. Like if you're sitting there on the fence like I want to get my first camper or I'm upsizing from something with no slide or I'm debating do I get the slide or no slide, this is definitely one to look at right here. Um, it fits in very nicely for a lot of half ton towability. It comes in just under 6,100 pounds dry weight. And what you're going to see uh, for the, uh, the 23 seasonal updates right here, um, other than the fact that they gave it a full exterior cosmetic facelift that I think looks absolutely awesome with that beautiful smooth nose front, they have, um, that what they really did is they standardized a lot of things that were just very popular options in the 22 season. So this thing, uh, one of the interesting qualities on it is that it's six foot nine tall. In this class and in this price point, a lot of campers are six and a half. It's not until you get to like the big stick and tins that you often run into six, nine ceilings, although there's some exceptions. It is carpetless in the slide floor and it matches the main floor, which is something I really like. But things that are awesome on here, uh, today we're getting to see the optional new bigger solar package. Jayco has really gotten far more serious about solar in the 23 season. And I'm really excited to have more of that roll out here so that you folks get a chance to take a look at it. The underbelly uh, is now standard and closed on these, but we still have those Goodyear tires with that 87 mile an hour rating. And being a Jayco, you also have that two plus three year warranty that is matched by nobody else in this class. But we are prepped and ready for not just a rear camera, but side observation cameras as well. And it's a bunch of little plus one things like that. Uh, like it's cool that they're using a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor but a lot of brands do that. So they take it up a notch and they use plywood up in the roof where most brands don't. They give us an option for a built on factory ladder. Some brands don't even give you an allowance for a ladder. Some brands make you go to the, uh, you know, removable extension ladder route. And this is all built right on. It's those kind of plus one things drops in the bucket you're going to see, but it does have a couple points of concern. I will show you the good with the bad as we go. So you let me know what you like. Let me know the number one thing you change. And if you appreciate how we show you the ups and the downs, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get going. Now you may have I've noticed all of these uh, RVs in this video had slide outs. Um, I, I wanted to specifically highlight things with slides that you could get through because RVs with no slides, it's kind of a no brainer. You can certainly get through those. I also did not include anything with a, uh, like a primary bed slide uh, due to the fact that 
In the towable RV industry, no manufacturer nor supplier tests to see whether you can or cannot use that slide while it is retracted, while it is closed. That's one of the things where towable and motorized RVs are very, very different. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, you're like, why, why didn't he include, say like that 264J flight? Now, uh, these are also just a handful of things that I've gone through and I've reviewed and have current footage of in the 2023 season. Like surprisingly to this point in time, I've not had a chance to uh, go through and get updated 2023 footage on a 26 dbh Cherokee, which absolutely qualifies for this list. So keep in mind, this is not intended to be the only list you need. This is just a handful of things that I had available for you to maybe kind of get you jump started and get you going in a direction that might work for you and your family. And again, whether it's you're, you're making a travel stop, whether the kid had to go potty real quick, or um, whether the RV's in storage and you're trying to just get through it to get it packed up, because sometimes not everybody has the chance to store their RV where they can just open the slide whenever they want. Sometimes it's really handy to be able to, to open things and get in there and pack them up and load the clothes and load the fridge before you leave or anything like that. So if you found value in this, if you thought this was useful, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video if you've returned, and let me know if you think there's one I'm missing and I need to get on my hit list. Because like I said, there's certainly plenty that I that uh, qualify that I don't have on this list today and let me know if I've missed one and maybe somebody else reading this might go huh maybe I should check that one out let's all kind of help each other here and until next time take care stay safe have fun <laughs> and I'm freezing everyone <laughs>